Israel and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to put the huge call to roll. Trustee Berrien? Present. Trustee Mary Spicherke? Present. Trustee Sweet? Present. Trustee Rogers? Present. Trustee Caprio? Present. Mayor Yukich? Present. Okay. Uh, are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the accounts payable for the period of May 27th, 2016 through June 21st, 2016? Uh -huh. Trustee Berrien? No, second. Trustee Sweeze? Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do we have a treasurer's report? Yes, we do. Okay. Thank you. I have the uh, treasurer's report for May 31st, 2016. It's the first month of the new fiscal year. It shows the general fund with a cash and investment balance of $4,494,328.70. The special event fund had a balance of $64,385.61. The environmental fund had a balance of $59,692.60. The Motor Fuel Tax Fund had a balance of $2,664,711.10. Park and Recreation Fund had a cash balance of $2,649,598.89. The Debt Service Fund had a balance of $1,517,901. The Capital Project Fund had a cash and investment balance of 207 $2,738,093.09. The EAB Tree Replacement Fund had a cash and investment balance of $483,688.71. And the last fund, the Bond Fund, had a cash and investment balance of $15,100,688.42 for a grand total, all funds, $29,773,088.12. And that concludes my report. Thank you, John. Does anyone have any questions for John? Okay. Uh, public comment. What's next? Thanks for that. We have two. First would be Lynn McClary. Lynn McGarry from Homer Glen. I'll keep my comments to less than a minute. I'm reminding you that the Lamont and Homer Glen area, Chamber of Commerce, we're official now, are, is having a Joliet Slammers night, July 28th. That's a Thursday. Tickets are $10 each. Uh, there's a business after hours between 5 and 6 in the Hall of Fame room with uh, drinks and food. And I have tickets available. And I hope to see you all at the fest where I'll still have tickets available. Thank you. Thanks very much. Second would be Tim Thanosaurus. Um, you know what, George, I put my name on there to, in case I need to speak. Okay. Yep. We'll bring you up here. It's fine. John, you want to talk? Uh, yeah, I didn't sign in because I didn't think I was going to say anything. But anyway, I was going to bring up the same thing I said at the committee before this uh, about the sidewalks on Bell Road, which is they had talked about that, you know, and I'm a proponent of having sidewalks in new subdivisions and new buildings, <laughs> whether it be commercial or residential. I also would, when I read a copy of the agenda, I would, I don't know, for some reason, I, I, I always thought that the name of the people that were going to be 
and the business that was going to be talked about was printed in the agenda so that when I, if I read it a day or two before I come to the meeting, I wouldn't know if these guys were going to put in uh, a drive-through, you know, shop for what, you know, other than it's a drive-through. Is it for coffee or is it for smokes? In other words, kind of give us an idea of what's going to be on the agenda and what kind of a shop is going to be, or store, or whatever it is, is going to move into these facilities. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> I couldn't figure out why Homer Township Subdivision also is on there, because that's, I don't think that's a subdivision, that's commercial property, isn't it? Not a subdivision property, but I don't know. All right, other than that, I think I mentioned that, you know, there's a couple things I didn't, you know, and I did question, I thought that there was going to be a new entrance put in there, but there isn't, which is good. Thank you. You're welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John, actually, are you thinking of Homer Town Square instead of Homer Township? Because that's, that's where Chipotle's and Starbucks is going to be. That's not, it has nothing to do with Homer Township. Are you looking at line number one? Legislation on it? You're right. Homer <coughs> Town Square subdivision. That's where Chipotle and Starbucks is going to go. Right. So. But I didn't realize subdivisions could be in commercial and industrial problems. Subdivided. As you're in a subdivision. Well, but not, not in that sense of the words. It's not houses. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. But we're okay. You kind of had me mixed up when I was reading this yesterday, you know. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. They're going to have drive through here and blah, blah, blah. It's Just call me. I'll let shower. you know. What is it for? Okay. Just call me. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. There are three motions for the board's consideration tonight. One, subject to village staff's technical review and approval of all required plans, and subject to property owner submittal of a plan of resubdivision for the Homer Town Square subdivision prior to the village issuing the first occupancy permit for the proposed commercial building on lot number three for certain real property, which is zone C3, general business district, and is generally located on the west side of Bell Road north of 143rd Street in Homer Glen, Illinois. Do I have a motion? So moved. Christine, do I have a second? A second. Carol. Is there any discussion? Yes, go ahead, Brad. Did you want to? Go ahead, Brad. No, I was just going to ask uh, Director Schwartz to maybe give him, I know you probably did this half hour ago. Um, but uh, no, no. Trustee Suiza, if you've got a question in the meantime, I was just going to ask him for an overview. Oh, go ahead. Uh, in your packet is a series <coughs> of attachments. They're asking for approval of the, the final development plan for Lot 3, which includes the uh, site plan, the architecture, the building elevations, the landscape plan. Um, essentially, it's a considered a, an amendment to a prior special use permit, which was granted for the overall shopping center. Um, and so this is an amendment to uh, allow a new, a new building. There never was a building proposed for this site, this outlot. Um, this is immediately east of Davidson's, south of the private bank, and north of the Dairy Queen uh, in the Homer Town uh, Square Shopping Center. Um, in your packet is the annexation agreement for the Homer Town Square Shopping Center. And you'll see there was a preliminary site plan or a site plan approval for at the time what was going to be a Dominic's, when Dominic's was the main anchor tenant, uh, there was a site plan approved as part of the annexation agreement for a Dominic's fueling center with a freestanding uh, drive-through car wash. Uh, obviously that site plan is a moot point now uh, because you have a proposal in front of you this evening which is a two unit uh, retail commercial building which will happen to be to have two tenants that are signed lease agreements with uh, Starbucks, which would have a drive-through on the southern tenant space, and a Chipotle restaurant, which would be the northern tenant space. Um, both uh, uh, tenants 
proposed outdoor seating. So there would be a total of uh, three, uh, six bistro tables, 12 uh, seats um, I, I'm, uh, out in front of the uh, building facing Bell Road. Uh, so you have three actions in front of you. One is the change to the special use, which granted uh, the shopping center zoning. And then also the uh, final development that's included with the final development plan for lot three. And there's a separate action that would be needed for the drive-through facility for the Starbucks that requires a special use permit under your zoning ordinance, as well as a special use permit for outdoor seating, which is required under the zoning ordinance. Um, there are some, I won't summarize, or I'll summarize, there are in your, listed in your packet, eight deviations or exceptions to the village uh, bulk requirements, which are listed in the packet. Um, they're asking, the, the primary one is the on-site parking reduction from 41 spaces down to 31. Um, there, as I indicated in the previous presentation, there are 796 parking spaces today at the shopping center. Under our code, they're required to have 715. So they're 81 spaces above or surplus what they're required to have. So on site, they will be short 10 spaces, but through the shared parking easement agreement, which was uh, <coughs> recorded previously, um, the applicants have already provided legal cross access and shared parking with the rest of the shopping center. Uh, staff does not have any concerns about that. And even accounting for the ultimate um, widening of Bell Road, uh, which could potentially result in the loss of parking spaces uh, along the entire shopping center, there is um, an overage in the code of 81. So it's nearly a net balance. Uh, and in fact, the applicant has indicated that they have room within their site to possibly reconfigure, restripe, uh, adjust some drive aisles and things, so that even with the worst case scenario that Bell Road, the, the project uh, does impact, impact their existing tenants, um, that they would still be uh, above and meeting the village's code required parking. Um, the other variances relate to the fact that the shopping center predates the village code. Uh, and they're looking to have some reductions in the yard requirements. So for example, there's a 30 foot grassy yard requirement between a parking lot and a property line. And they're at, um, uh, the dimensions are in your report, but they're, they're less than that because they're trying to match the, sh the, ex the existing shopping <coughs> center while also accounting for the ultimate uh, Bell Road widening project. So they're pre-planning. Uh, and then the last thing, the architecture, uh, there's a, there's a small there, I'm sorry there's a small sign setback variance as noted in your report I think it's from 15 feet to 10 feet on one side and 15 feet to four feet on the other um, there's also the the building elevations show are essentially matching the buildings that are out there today and in fact they have more brick on the new building than the existing shopping center they're providing the EFIS or man-made stucco material uh, which are the the beige areas there on the color exhibit um, as a backdrop to the signage. Um, and that material is pretty common because it's something you can paint and patch over time as you replace uh, tenant signage. Hopefully, again, we'll have these tenants for a long time. Uh, but they're providing more brick on the new building than they have on the existing shopping center. But the architecture is compatible, the style of the building, uh, the material, they have a material board there if there are any questions. They're basically going to match what's out there today. And that's kind of a the quick overview of, of the project. Uh, yes, several. Uh, Director Short, did you say that they may lose some front parking in the future, or? We uh, believe because of the Bell Road, the significance of the Bell Road widening project, the, uh, the, the Will County Department of Transportation is working with this landowner, as well as all the business landowners up and down Bell Road. Uh, there could be some impacts, uh, likely impacts to the furthest row of parking that's closest to the right of way. And I believe we counted approximately 90 spaces that could be impacted uh, by the right of way taking or the right of way acquisition. Um, but having said that, the, the, as it stands today, based on the current tenant, uh, build, uh, tenant mix of the shopping center, uh, the property has a surplus of 81 parking spaces. Okay. So it would be a negligible uh, deficiency, even, even if all of those parking spaces were taken by the right-of-way project, uh, the, prop the shopping center would still be very close to meeting the village's code required parking. 
and again the applicant has indicated they've sketched out some ideas for how they could recoup some of that lost parking by just reorienting maybe some of the rows and doing some uh, creative site resite design okay. well uh, mr. Santosaurus I, I do want to thank you for your time today on the phone sure. and I just wanted to what I want to do is uh, you were most willing to abide and um, help the village with the uh, the lighting ordinance because that's you know I'm a chair of the environment committee as well and actually I was going to I didn't know we were not doing reports today because that was going to bring up uh, our stargazing event with the lighting uh, aspect so and, and so to avoid future complications I would like to amend the motion to add on to number one uh, because there there is requirements because this property is less little over uh, an acre and so there's lumen requirements that have to be brought down and I know like on your schedules you you have 40 K which is 40 40 4 thousand Kelvin and that we require 3,000 or even less um, I did not know I did not know if you knew that there are amber LEDs out there that doesn't you maybe this company you're using you might want to look into that too uh, and I also had a question on the schedule there was eight I don't know are those bollards uh, the the yeah. no we're not going to use any of the bollards those are not there's not going to be bollards any yeah. no, there's not gonna be any okay bollards. all right so <clears throat> The motion that you read, Mayor, but the only change, and I, uh, two changes maybe, where it says including certain variations, I don't know if we have to refer to one through eight to make that very clear on page five through five and six, those variations uh, to add on as listed on pages five and six, they were doing all the parking variations, the site vision triangle for the trash, uh, if we need to list that there and also number one I would like it I would like to amend the motion to read subject to village staff's technical review approval of all required plans and in compliance with the village's exterior lighting ordinance and then we go on to number two okay uh, we have to read motion well, if it's accepted by the if you're willing to accept that or we're seconding as willing to accept that amendment. Sure. I can second. Okay. Sure. And if I could just clarify something too. We we certainly could have when we drafted the first ordinance, number twenty one, uh, sixteen dash twenty one. Uh, listed all of those in in the ordinance and we could still do that before they're signed um, but I think it's covered under section 3 that talks about the final development plan uh, being approved because they're they're sort of tacitly implied in the fact that if you approve this development plan those variations are there okay. so well long as they know that we're working with them on that too I did have a question as well on um, cross access is the village so are we ours. trying to facilitate something it says that on a cross access from Menards and Mr. Thin Sources property uh, that they're supposed to join the uh, two stubs together yes yeah, so I'm just going to be very brief on this the late in the day on Thursday we or late in the day Friday I should say we received a letter from Menards um, corporate office regarding just reminding the village uh, that there is, Menards has its own annexation agreement with the village and this Homertown Square has its own annexation, annexation agreement with the village. Um, and the timing of those annexation agreements came at a time when the village was really desirable. It's desirable to bring them into the village and they willingly did come into the village. Um, the annexation agreement, if you, if you read the language, it really just says that the, the parties will be work cooperatively together to try and make this cross access happen. And certainly the village staff uh, will continue to work with both parties to see if there's a solution to that. Um, there isn't a hard and fast condition per se in the annexation agreement that requires it at a date certain or, or by any one party. Um, I think the parties have had several meetings in the past that were described as amicable. Um, uh, there's obviously a question of who would pay for what and what the timing would be. Uh, but the village is open to 
solutions to make that happen. Uh, we're not provide. We're not recommending, and the plan commission earlier did not recommend a condition as far as uh, mandating the cross access happen as a condition of approval for this last outlet <coughs> development. Mr. Thanosaurus, the on the on the property. How far does your property go before it attaches to my house? Uh, it's the entranceway, the north entranceway is on our property, and the lot that's vacant becomes Menard's property. There's about 10 feet. Right. Okay, so you're looking at 10 feet? Correct. Uh, the way it was written, is it just each one doing their part to install the cross access? If he only has 10 feet before it becomes Menard's property, does Menard's plan on doing the balance of it? There's, that remains to be seen. There's a little bit of design work that still has to be done. Um, there's, and I, what I was going to try and show you on the map here is an overview. If I can just get right back to where I was. There we go. Um, do we need the lights down? Do you, is the board able to see the screen? Can I just maybe turn one set of lights off? Yeah, turn the set off. Um, yeah, thank you for taking that board down. Probably the other one. I just, I think a picture is a thousand more, so we'll show you briefly. So, can everybody see the, the screen there? It's an aerial photo of the northern part of the Homer Town uh, Square shopping center, which I'll use the arrow to show you. This is their retention pond. There is a parcel of land with the east west section of the roadway already constructed. That parcel of land is actually belongs to the village and that section of roadway belongs to the village. At one point there was a plan to extend that road west across the ComEd right of way and into a, res a, a residential subdivision that, that has a stub street kind of waiting for it. That never happened. Um, the properties to the north, the two here, are outlots that are owned by Menards. There's an outlot here and an outlot here. And if I zoom out a little bit or bring the map down, you can see the section of roadway that's running on an angle is Menard's uh, uh, driveway that they connected from in front of their store to that road, which was going to go, you know, at some point was going to connect. So Menard's has these two outlots. They would like to maybe eliminate this angled section of pipe pavement and either bring it straight down, almost like a frontage road aisle, or where the other road here behind it is, is stuck, bring that south, and then you'd have two outlots without this road tra traversing, you know, where they can build another building. Um, <coughs> if you go back to this property that we're talking about this evening, it has a its own on its property full access. It's a right in if you're southbound and belt behind private bank and then into the shopping center. And then it also has, it's not, there's no light, but it's, it's an access point. And then it's a full out. You can either turn left and go north on Bell or turn right and go south on Bell. And so that's an access point that's there today. And we're talking the 10 feet we're talking about is basically between the existing village right of way street um, and the uh, existing drive aisle that comes around the back side of the, uh, on the north side of the uh, Homer Town Square Shopping Center. So, the village is open to continuing discussions with both parties and trying to facilitate that to happen. But again, there's no, there's no hard and fast condition as the letter you've received in your packet would make it sound as far as uh, some sort of obligation that's not being uh, met through the development of this outline. Thank you, that clarifies it because the letter seems like, unless you read about everything, it seems like it was like, Mandatory, and that's yeah, right, and that's not true. Um, I have some, just some general concerns. The trash enclosure, I know there was a lot of discussion at the planning committee about it. I just can't see how a truck is going to make that swing in there. Has, it, has engineering looked at that? I mean, a truck, a, dump, a garbage truck is going to be able to back into that? What I understand that from these types of containers that they're the overhead lift from the front of the truck. And they're wheeled out into that drive aisle, and usually they're coming early in the morning. When there's uh, coffee. It's possible that they would, there would be some, you know, I let the architect explain, you know, this, we've looked at different scenarios at where, as even before the case was filed, as to where 
um, the best place to have it accessible to the employees so they're dragging garbage closest to the building and they don't have to go across the drive aisle or go across the, uh, the drive-through lane or anything like that. Um, this is not going to front directly on any of the other existing stores. There will be parking immediately in front of Private Bank and in front of uh, Jimmy John's and um, the Orient Cafe. Uh, but the, with the gates closed, this diagram shows the gates fully open just to show that how they open up. With the gates closed, there's, there's somewhat of a setback there, uh, three feet, five inches, that basically allows some visibility. And then with the stop bars and the stop signs that we've asked for, we think that we've mitigated any safety concerns coming around that trash enclosure as far as visibility. Um, I've done a couple of Starbucks, built, developed a few of them, and just from experience, what I would recommend doing is bringing an outlet out there to that trash enclosure because what you can do is have a tr um, trash compactor. So, uh, you know, we had a heavy volume Starbucks that was co-tenant with an Oberweiss and uh, we were, our trash was just crazy, which I think you'll probably have similar here because of all the food usage. And they can put the, the um, trash right in there, they push the button, they squeeze it, and then that also eliminates the daily pickup that you would probably have to have here. I would just bring it out there and stub it in case you find that, because, you, you know, I've had centers where I've had to do trash pickup twice a day because it, it's gotten so bad. Um, and then I know at the planning committee there was some discussion about garbage cans outside and things like that. And what I find is the complete opposite. It's, it helps people clean out their car. It doesn't help them. They're not going to drink their coffee while they're ordering and then dump it. They're going to throw out their McDonald's that they had two days ago and put it in there. And then in the front where you have that um, outside seating area, s same issues I had. If you have garbage cans out there, they get full so fast, and in the obviously only in the summertime, it becomes bee infested. There's just bees everywhere, and then people don't want to sit out there and eat, and you're fighting off the bees. And you know, there's a lot of people who are allergic to them too. I would encourage you to keep the complete opposite of what the plan committee is: keep the garbage inside. And I think even the um, one of them had mentioned. It, it basically turns in, because I, I do it myself. If, if I have a, my coffee or my, my drink from my lunch and I'm going through the drive through I try to find the nearest garbage can. So you're just bringing garbage to that site as opposed to somebody. People, I, thankfully, I don't see too many people throwing uh, coffee cups out their window at the drive throughs I just don't see it happening. Um, but I would just really, it, it, it wouldn't be anything for you to bring and not, so that it's not an after effect, so that you're not, I'm not saying you have to put a garbage disposal in there now, but it, it is something that, and it's gonna keep the odor down because it's all enclosed. You know, when you put the trash in, it's almost like a, a at least the one that I had, you open it and you close it and it's shut all the time and there's no way for garbage to overflow. Uh, you eliminate a lot of, if on a windy day, garbage flowing around in the um, shopping center. Was and the compactor it, hardwired? Pardon? Yes. It was hardwired? Yeah, was that's why you need to it, think about that when you're building it now is to to, hard, to bring that electric out there so that you're not cutting into the asphalt after the fact, doing it later. And, you know, it's a, the, you know, it's, I'm sure these are triple net leases, so it's just a pass through off to them anyway, and it's just going to keep the garbage down. You're going to save on maintenance cleaning out there because you're not going to be flying, garbage isn't going to be flying out around there. Uh, you know, the pickup. I think I had ARC, ARC disposal who did it. Um, the pickup is, it's going to be a wash at the end because the, the, you're not going to have to go out there every single day. But it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else? Okay. Um, we've already, we have a city to vote. And just for the record, because it's blank, there's a yellow, three yellow highlights on pages two and three of your agenda mm -hmm. supplement sheet. The plan commission vote this evening uh, was four to zero to recommend each of the three requests. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Nancy Charkey? Aye. Motion carries. As amended. As amended. As amended. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay. We go to number two. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 16-021, an ordinance granting a special use permit for a drive through establishment associated with a permitted use on lot three in the Homer Town Square subdivision? I so move. Just squeeze. Second. Yes. Yes, Second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Nasky Turkey? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, motion number three. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 16-021? An ordinance granting a special use permit for outdoor seating associated with two permitted restaurants on lot three in the Homer Town Square subdivision. Do I have a motion? Was that number right? I think you said 021 is 022. Okay, I thought that's what I said. 022. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Sharon? Yes. Okay. I'll second, yes. Any discussion? I just, you know, I have some concerns over um, just the maintenance of it. You know, do we have any control over? you know, how these things are maintained, because again, you know, I've seen that the coffee gets on the ground, now, you know, the Chipotle stuff, who, that's my only concern is just keeping up with the maintenance out there, with that kind of usage. So is it something that uh, you would handle if it, uh, if it we, as as, uh, Mayor, we actually made that a part of our lease uh, negotiations that they are responsible for it, because we can't be there 24-7, they have to be at, and they've agreed to it. They've agreed that everything inside of that fencing that we've allowed them to put on the outside, that they will maintain that. Power washing the sidewalks, um, you know, cleaning it up on an hourly basis, making sure the garbage cans are removed. You know, uh, we even got to the point where I think they have to maintain like the umbrellas that they might put out there, and things like that. So they'll take care of it. Both that entities, is, both entities agreed to it. Yes. And then have they agreed to, like, if I have my coffee, I can go sit over at Chipotle's if there's no spots? How's that going to work? They do not have that agreement. Yeah. That's not something they, they uh, even, I mean, they're not talking to each other, right. but they do coexist in other locations, and they like each other, quite frankly. It's a, it's a it's very easy. good, it's a very good usage for each other, the morning versus the evening type of thing. Uh, but I don't think they have those agreements in place, company-wide. So they're responsible for their own pressure washing? Inside the, inside the, I will wash the power washing on the sidewalks entrances into it. Mm -hmm. They will take care of everything inside. Of the patio. Okay. One, one thing, if, Mr. Mayor, if I may add, just regarding the outdoor seating, you know, this project is still under review and we're doing technical review ongoing following uh, any consideration this evening. Uh, regarding the outdoor seating, we did not, and you didn't notice in your packet, any sort of site furnishing details. Um, we're staff from our perspective are deferring to the tenants to the occupants to the type of furnishings or seats I would imagine um, Chipotle's seating would be slightly different than um, Starbucks and so the question you know could people sit uh, no one's going to really I don't think there'd be any issue uh, with someone sitting at one or the other <coughs> uh, that would be between the two tenants uh, but in terms of the style of what you'll see out there the railing is the developer is proposing a railing consistent on both sides of the building, um, but we didn't have uh, site details. That's certainly something we can look at if there's any concerns about it. But I wanted to bring it up and bring it part of the record because it's possible that the the seating on one side of the building could look different than the other side of the building. Is that seating allowed to stay out overnight? Do you know? I think so. Yeah, they just leave it out. Those other ones. Everyone comfortable? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweets? Aye. Trustee Nice Jorky? Aye. Trustee Barian? Aye. Trustee Caprian? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> we were all set, guys. Thank you. Welcome to the community. Uh, number two. <clears throat> Temporary liquor license for the Greek, for the 
for a Greek for a day first. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to assign a Class E liquor license, temporary license, to Assumption Greek Orthodox Church located at 15625 South Bell Road, Homer Glen, for the Greek for a Day festival occurring July 23rd and 24th, 2016? It's a move. Carlo? Second. Christine? Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Kepler? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Nesky Trite? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, last one, prevailing wage standards. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 16-023, an ordinance adopting the required prevailing wage standards in the village of Homer Glen of Cole County, Illinois. Aye. Christine, is there a second? No, second. Sharon, is there any discussion? And could you please call the roll? Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Nesky Turkey? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Berry? Aye. Motion carries. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? That's the move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. We're adjourned.